Well, hello there, and welcome to a new series of RC Racing. I'm John Hindorf. It's my pleasure to commentate on some of the best RC Racing action from all over the globe. Alongside me, as ever, Nick Damon. Nick, where are we going to take the viewers this year? We're taking you everywhere for a cornucopia of RC action. We've got the 1-8th World Track Championships from Switzerland, the 1-5th World Track Championships from Brooklands in Kent. We've also got, for the first time, electric off-road from the Proline Dirt Arena. We're going to the DHI Cup in Denmark again. And our star event this year, it's the biggest event in the world by entries. It's the Snowbirds Nationals in Florida. Okay, that all sounds very exciting. Where are we going in this issue and where are we going first? Well, where we're off to now is an event we enjoyed so much last year. It's the Baja Endurance from the Nürburgring this year. Unfortunately, due to a planning error, um, you and I went the week before. Yes, for the Le Mans Series Endurance Race. Yeah, so unfortunately, we had to send Matt. This is HPI's 24-hour Baja Endurance Challenge 2009. Europe's premier large-scale off-road event which sees the best RC Baja drivers and mechanics from across the continent do battle. Each team has already won at the highest level in their own country, so naturally confidence is high. We go for the win. We can battle for first place. You think so? Yes. We are here to, to win. We're going to be on TV now, so don't interrupt. But the next 24 hours will decide. He's probably not going to sleep. I don't want to change any, any spare parts. <laughs> and the pressure's on. It's killer, isn't it? Who will cross the finish line and who will make it through the night? Everything's changed. With this year's challenge set in Germany's motorsport mecca Nürburgring, our teams soak up the heritage, both on the Nordschleife and where they're more at home, on the mud. And what better place to prepare our teams for the challenge than here at the Camp for Fun Off-Road Park. <laughs> to the floor. Yeah. To the floor. To the floor. Yeah. Clinging to the inside of a full-scale Land Rover Discovery, equipped with ultra-low crawler gear cases, drivers can fine-tune their skills and quick reflexes. With our teams fully bonded and warmed up, it's back to the track for qualifiers and last-minute preparations. The qualifier took place over one hour, with the teams aiming to gain the fastest single lap. See, we're just cleaning the car up after the qualifiers. Didn't have a brilliant qualifier. Team UK2 suffered in the wet conditions, with teams Germany 2 and 1 taking the top spots followed by a very confident Slovenia in third position. Our team is very good prepared. I think you have really good chances for the... For the yes, race. because we have very good six drivers. Uh, they're driving very carefully. The one thing we have done is give ourselves the best backing and the best service we could do, really. It's a 24-hour race, man. It's going to need a lot of luck. Skill, preparation and luck. Our teams now need a healthy dose of all three as it's time for the main event. As the clock ticks through the first minutes, typically chaotic opening laps ensue as the teams fight to establish positions early on. And with teams Germany 1 and 2 taking top qualifying spots, is it a case of home advantage or a more philosophical view? If you have many problems, yeah. uh, you lose. And if you have not so much, you can win. <laughs> A few hours in and the battle scars are beginning to appear. Be it lapses in concentration or competition pressure. Several teams have early repair work and must act quickly to get back in the race. Another uh, concurrent crash on the back of our car and broke the triangle. And on the other side of the pits, a very British version of the same problem. Uh, yeah, someone hit us up the arse. <laughs> <laughs> Once the pit crew have identified the problem, it's a race against the clock to fix and refit new parts. For the team to work effectively, they need to establish clear communication with all members. 
But when a team's car stops running, pulses begin to race and stress and panic set in. <laughs> Some teams implement a radio system to stay ahead of the game. Uh, well, the intercoms are pretty much just to go between marshal, pit and driver, so if the driver's got an issue with the car, you can radio in and say, issue with car coming in for pit, just to speed things up a little, everyone knows what's happening. Other teams rely on the more traditional method of shouting. In the midst of the melee, one team's laid-back approach stands out. Czech Republic, who seem to have a comfortable second place and are catching up. We have four or five laps before uh, behind the first, yeah. and we are getting smaller and smaller gap yeah. behind the first. So we'll see. <laughs> so it's, it's going. Uh... It's going good. <laughs> but moments later, and trouble strikes. A collision has caused damage to Czech Republic's front shocks and the team must leap into action. The pit crew meet with the mechanic who has the replacement part ready. And at breakneck speed they refit, restart and get back on the chase for top position. It's all in a day's work for Czech Republic. Fast and furious. <laughs> As the afternoon draws on, rain begins to fall, bringing with it more challenges for our teams to overcome. The wet surface makes controlling the Bajas tougher. The dirt can clog up the buggy's moving parts, plus the covering of mud and water can add an extra two kilos, but the Bajas don't show any signs of slowing down. Team Germany 1's driving skills keep them in the lead for much of the afternoon, lapping back markers again and again. The super cool Czechs continue to hold their own and gun for first place. Many teams are struggling, including top qualifiers Germany 2, who seem to be slipping down the positions. But something's not right. They have a problem with the transponder, it didn't count and they don't find what it is. The race timing system hasn't been counting a number of teams laps correctly. Yeah, they're just looking and they don't find the problem. They, they uh, change it with another one, but it also oh. doesn't count. So. And more teams are having the same problem. With the problem escalating and teams up in arms, the race organizers are forced to take radical action. The timing sensor, which is buried in the track, has malfunctioned and only counted teams' laps intermittently. Every race meeting is going to have its problems. We certainly had our fair share of problems with the, with the timing equipment, uh, which uh, forced us to pause the race, and have a few meetings with the team managers, and do some repairs to the track just to keep things rolling. With the race suspended, the team managers would take a vote and resolve to add half of the current laps to the final result. So as the sun sets over the Camp for Fun off-road park, the race staff work tirelessly to make repairs while the teams await the all-clear to get back out on the track. Well, plenty of tension there and we'll be back with Matt at the Nürburgring in Germany for the conclusion of that Barger event later in the show. But what's next? Well, John, for the last four years, we've been promising to cover one-tenth electric off-road, which of course was historically the biggest class of all mm. back in the 80s and 90s. Well, we've finally done it. We went to the Proline Dirt Arena and there'll be a complete report on the race next issue. But now, the two-wheel drive A final. So the two wheel drives and Richard Barton's on pole position on the low seat. Tony Truman on the associated in second position. Simon Willett's on the Kyosho in third with the uh, mainly fluorescent green paintwork. All blue for Lloyd Story from Toaster in fifth position. Hello. Yes, hello to you as well. Alex Springer in five. In six, Keith Newton. You started something now, haven't you? In seventh, Ross Searle. And at the back, Anthony Hart has the white associated. All right, we're ready to go. Listen for the tone. 
and off goes Richard Barton from pole position and immediately Tony Truman has a little look he's been very quick over the whoops so there's a battle on between Lloyd Story and Simon Willits for third position and at the moment it is Simon Willits just holding on let's have a look see where the blue car is no he's gone down a position Springer's come through into fourth position but it's the leaders we're watching here over the whoops again as they come back towards us Barton from Truman and then it looks as though I think Story's got through into third there was that a flash of blue no it's still Willits then Story has got a position back from Springer they're having a great battle Springer's dropped back down and Searle coming through the field there, I think. Ross Searle in the seven car, the white and blue machine. As the leaders head into the technical section. It's as you were from the grid, Barton, Truman and Willits. But there's been plenty of action already here at Proline. Now the leaders. Tony Truman stalking his prey. Second position. So that is our lead pair. Heading across the start finish line. oh there's been a change for Lena Tony Truman's gone through Barton now in second place I'm sure yes look he's had a little look down the inside there but Barton with that bright fluorescent green rear wing is now in second place and Truman has pulled away well I said he was stalking his prey he's used a very good move around that left hander at the top of the arena and then over the whoops and he's heading off in the distance hasn't he? he's made good he's escaped there look at that gap between himself and Pullman Barton in second place in third looks like Lloyd Story to me in the blue B4 there he is just heading through but he's a long way back and now traffic may just play a part is this an opportunity for Barton to get back this is super driving from Richard who settled himself down after losing the lead and look he's gaining and oh curse of the commentator he's off he's gone off in the whoops it's been his downfall lost the lead there and then in right in front of the leader Springer and Ross Searle getting together Barton very quick there into that first right hander and has dealt with couple of bat markers relatively easy the leaders in the wall now that's cost him some time there's Springer but he's a lap down the car behind him is Richard Barton who is in second place so forget the red car in the background has Truman from Bister managed to get his self together himself together yes he has two-wheel drive cars just scrabbling for a bit of front end grip on some of the faster corners drive them with the throttle and again oh now he's taking a shortcut and had to come on behind the leader the new leader as Barton takes his opportunity tremendous stuff Barton just proving that you've got to keep pushing and they're both crossed up there through the whoops but Barton still leads the red car is a lap down Springer is a lap down behind them but this part for the lead, there's a nudge, a little nudge there. And you saw Tony Truman backed out of it, allowed Barton to recover. That's allowed Springer to go back through on the lead lap, but he pulls out the way, doesn't want to be involved in this. And why would you? Goodness me, this is great action. And has Barton just recovered his composure enough to pull away from Truman? There's the gap, one and two. The red car, just a, a lap or so behind. Still looking for third place, which I think is still the story, but damn, take my eyes off the leaders for the moment. Oh, and there's the mistake from Truman this time, as he loses time. Does nobody want to win this race? Well, apparently not, as Barton noses it in, trying to triple the whoops, and didn't get it done. Now, is that story? No, story's a lap down in the blue car. Looks like he's in second place, but he's not. There he is. So we'll have to look further back, and I think it's Simon Willits then who's challenging. But no doubt about the leader, Barton, can cruise home from here, surely. No more mistakes, played Richard. As he comes through and takes the applause of the crowd, it's a win for Richard Barton. So Richard Barton wins it. Simon Willits fighting his way up at the end in a second position ahead of Tony Truman in third. Those three, the only ones who finished on the lead lap.
Time now to get back to the action here on RC Racing as we return to Matt at the Nürburgring for the conclusion of the 24-hour bar. 9pm and the race restarts. Now it's dark and the track temperature has plummeted, but there's no time for drivers to adjust. Breaking ahead of the pack in this uneasy situation will help teams boost their position. And whilst a percentage of the laps already run will be added to the final standings, this is a second chance to get off to a good start. As many teams were aware, the night driving stage would be the most challenging yet. I think the, the night will be a challenge for, for all of us. To, to pass uh, the, the night. Pass, pass the night. Yeah. If we, we are running at uh, 8 o'clock morning, Okay. The track keeps changing every half an hour, new bumps and everything. Well, for me, it's it's difficult to drive in the darkness. The back um, straight, is you don't see it, you don't see the tires, and it's really hard. You have to go some, I don't know, five times to to learn the track. Yeah. Mechanic no problem. It's just a human problem. Yeah, yeah. That's all. <laughs> okay. But as you'd expect, all our teams came well prepared. Yes. You see, the Dutch, <laughs> they have always a good, uh, very nice barbecue. Eh? We took a long nap. Adrenaline keeps us going. We got sneakers. We have uh, some some uh, sausages left, and we got Red Bull. Red Bull. Red Bull. Yeah, Red Bull. Coffee. Actually, Rockstar. Mars. A cup of coffee and uh, well, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> One team evidently not relying on energy drinks are the new leaders, Czech Republic. You appear to be leading at the moment, uh, and here you are with your feet up. Just relaxed. <laughs> yeah, just relaxed. Uh, yeah. Can you uh, just just tell us what the current strategy is with the team? Uh, same like in the beginning, so go smooth and no mistakes and no crashes, so easy. Easier said than done. It's not just the elements that are changing, but also the track, constantly. In fact, in this race, every lap is a different experience. Weighing in at 10 kilos and tearing across the landscape at around 40 miles per hour, the Bajas have a serious impact on the surface. So, a team is reshaping and maintaining the track throughout the whole race. Jan Ackerman built the track especially for this event. We only have two days because there is no permanent track. We must make it in two days and so we make the best. The team managers had mixed opinions on this year's track. On the first side we didn't like the track very much. Oh, it's perfect. It looks wonderful. It is very, very easy. I expect something more difficult. The track is much better than last year. It's not going to be any fun when it's wet like this, none at all. So we need to uh, adjust to the track, not track to, our, uh, to, to us. No, we don't have time to sleep. <laughs> One thing that both drivers and marshals agree though, on this track, at night, concentration is a matter of survival. As the temperature continues to fall, fatigue begins to take its toll and our teams begin to show the strain. Increasingly erratic driving makes the marshals' lives even harder as buckling drivers struggle to steady themselves. Poor judgement lead to more frequent crashes that become even harder to fix in the adverse conditions. With 12 hours to go, Germany 1 are in first place with Czech Republic and Holland biting at their heels. Further down the standings and the battles are even more intense. And in the dead of night, the pits are about to be gripped by chaos. Team GB1 have suffered water damage to their radio gear and must swap out their receiver. Top qualifiers Germany 2 have continued their rotten look and now find themselves in 11th place with shock damage to contend with. Enter Team Poland 1 with significantly more at stake and fighting the Estonians for fourth place and spitting distances from those all important podium places.
The chief Poland mechanic barks orders at his crew as they rush to emerge from a bad crash and replace their front end. Fighting for space, fighting to be heard and aching to get back in the race. As one team sprints back to the track, another hits the pit table, knowing that lap after lap, the race is getting away. But for all those involved, the suspense is mounting. All but two of the teams survived the night. Team UK2 had only three members and not enough parts to see them through. Also, last year's winners, Hungary, were a shock dropout and would be the only other team not to finish. In the early hours, Germany won regained the lead briefly, but lost it again to Czech Republic, whilst Holland and Slovenia battled hard for third position. And in a race that in the end was more about never giving up, Iceland again proved to be one of the toughest teams. When the sun was coming up, right. the shadows on the tracks was, uh, looked, looked like the tires or, <laughs> or the cars were on the track. So. Right. Overall, how do you guys uh, feel after driving all night? Tired. <laughs> Tiredness and the early morning shadows also led to uncharacteristic problems for our leaders. Czech Republic have been involved in a collision and this time there's no avoiding the pits. With the time leeching away in second place Germany won, edging closer by a lap every 30 seconds, Czech Republic refit the damaged parts in record time and get back on track without losing their position. And as the end approaches, the Czechs are in defence mode. The last minute, the last second is going to be... I feel pretty good now, like four o'clock <laughs> this morning, I was... With the final laps approaching and the high spirits spreading through the pits, a chance to reflect. <laughs> yeah, I'll be buying loads of badges now. <laughs> B2s, everything. Uh, my fresh, yes. <laughs> so you look, uh, you look pretty fresh. The team's been quality, everyone's been real good. It's, you know what I mean, we had a lot of downtime. Yeah. You know what I mean, next time we'll do some different planning. Yeah. Just, like I said, you just got to keep counting laps because it's an endurance. And the laps didn't stop as the teams continue to surge onwards for the finish line. As home team Germany won, stunning driving skills deliver them a solid second place, ahead of the determined Holland one who overcame every obstacle to take third. But the cool game plan of one team paid off. After a whole day and night and 1,534 laps, Czech Republic arrives in remarkable condition as the winner of the Baja Endurance Challenge 2009. We don't have the troubles with the car. We yeah. just we just make only small fixes like with the tape or yeah. with some cable binder. So yeah. no problems. Okay. And the secrets of our winner's success? Try to, to keep everything in, in, in a good shape. Everything must be prepared perfectly. Don't overrush. It's not so important to be fast, but it's important to be easy to drive the car. Yeah. Yeah. And, and stay calm. Yeah, it's been a lovely weekend, in all honesty. Yeah, that was a wonderful race. The weekend was great. It's a great, a great, great race. Well, fantastic action there. Thanks and very well done to Matt. And can we make sure that we get our dates right next year so that we can go? Yeah, rather than just a week early. Um, <laughs> Right, that's unfortunately, that's all we have time for this, uh, this episode of RC Racing, but next month is one of the things I know you all love the most, because not only are we covering one tenth of Pro and Dirt Arena, but um, I'm having a go. So that could be either disastrous or massively successful, John. You've been practising, it's got dirt on its wheels. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, see you all next time on RC Racing. Bye for now. Another series sounds like, oh, God, God, it's another, another series. series.